Well, folks, I do want to honor our time this morning. Happy Wednesday to everybody. It's good to see you. Let me pick that up here. Yes, happy happy Wednesday to everyone. Good to be back with you after a, uh, a Wednesday where we had a break time. But you know what? We had folk that still came. Still came. <laughs> we and want they get extra, extra credit. credit. For yes. Did you show yes. Us yes. Well, I had to come for class oh, anyway, okay. but I came to Robert's we'll station get them and came early. early. That's Carol Jean and, and Carol Sue. Jean and I could, uh, that great? Nice that visit, wonderful? didn't we, Carol Jean? Isn't yeah. that great? That's great. <laughs> I love it. Well, folks, let me pray for us, please, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and begin. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, to you be the glory, Lord. I, I pray that uh, we are enjoying, Lord, this fall weather, Lord, that came through uh, last night, oh God, uh, for <clears throat> this uh, fall season that we are in, certainly for uh, this season, oh God, uh, with you getting in to your word, studying the book of Daniel, Lord, it is a blessing, Lord, certainly for those that are here, Lord, good to see them, glad they are here, bless each and every one of them, for those that are away this day, certainly, Lord, uh, let them know through your mighty presence that, that they are uh, thought of and certainly lifted up in prayer. Uh, to you be the glory, Jesus, always, in your name, amen. <coughs> Amen. Bless you. Here we go. Okay. She at least has three, I'm sure. So, all right. Uh, uh, they're coming. They're coming. And we've got it on tape, by the way. So, yeah, yeah. It comes in three. Very good. So, uh, folks, I, I thought what we would do is read through Daniel 7, uh, word to word, um, the entire chapter there, and then prepared just some notes for us that uh, I, I, I want us to uh, look at, and then we will get right into, uh, there it is, um, bless you, uh, as much as uh, time allows for chapter 8. So uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and do that now. Uh, so anyone who would like to uh, begin with chapter 7. I, I tell you what, let's do this. I, I've got a I've got a natural break, uh, verses one through eight. So whoever would like to read chapter seven, verses one through eight, we can we can go ahead and start there. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. <coughs> Excuse me. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night. The four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I watched, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a human being, and a human mind was given to it. Another beast appeared, a second one that looked like a bear. It was raised up on one side, had three tusks in its mouth among its teeth, and was told, Arise and devour many bodies. <clears throat> After this, as I watched, another appeared like a leopard. The beast had four wings of a bird on its back and four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the visions by night a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had, a great iron, it had great iron teeth and was devouring, breaking in pieces and stamping what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that preceded it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns when another horn appeared, a little one coming up among them to make room for it. Three of the earlier horns were plucked up by the roots. There were eyes like human eyes in this horn and a mouth speaking arrogantly. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Okay. So we, we will uh, learn in just a moment, of course, that this is a, a very frightful picture that 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 Daniel uh, has received here uh, not not so much uh, beasts as we would think of them but uh, symbols of, of kingdoms rising and falling uh, kingdoms that that we have 
already identified in earlier chapters, but yet again, there, there's this parallel. I believe, I believe it is chapter, chapter 2. Yeah, chapter 2 and chapter 7, uh, very similar there. But, but kingdoms we are, we are talking about here. But, but still, nonetheless, uh, this, is, uh, th th this is quite a fright for Daniel as it would be uh, for anyone to have this, have this dream placed upon uh, their, uh, their head, as Scripture says, while, while he was in bed. So uh, let's, uh, let's pick it up, verse 9. Please, and we will read through. Let's uh, let's read through verse fourteen, if if uh, someone would like to read that, please. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow; the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Oh, right very good, very good. Uh, just uh, just a couple of couple of things here that that I've noticed in my notes that I want to highlight here uh, in this in this section. Thank you, Randy, for for reading that. Um, okay, verse, excuse me, chapter seven that we're in, verse twelve. It says the rest of the beasts is a reference to the three beasts of Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. Uh, they uh, had their dominion then taken away. There was this rise and there was this fall. Uh, though these nations passed away, their dominion was inherited by their respective successors. Uh, and, and then this mention here, uh, a season and a time uh, being an, an idiom for an indefinite period. Now, now here's, what's, here's what's really, really interesting, and we've got some New Testament parallels to this. Let's, let's look at, just for a moment, <clears throat> uh, 7 and 13. Okay. Uh, you're you're going you're gonna to recognize this text. Uh, because it's it, it's mentioned both in Matthew and Revelation, where it says, "I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming <clears throat> with the clouds of heaven. Uh, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him who was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all of the people, nations, and languages." should serve him. So so the idea that there is this eternal kingdom, this this eternal king. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, that is in my explanation, but I still don't know, and I do not believe this explanation. I'd like to share this. Uh, for, uh, Sam, Sam, the fourth beast. But to me, this is all from Revelation uh, 20, so about what we learned here in this chapter. <coughs> but uh, here it says, no such animal exists, rather. This is a unique beast pointing to Roman Empire, already represented by Ireland in chapter 240, devastating in conquest, Roman dominance fell apart, 
AD 476. 70, 476. There is lived in a divided status and is point out dual. And that does make sense to me. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But I, I, will I would... be received in return to to great unified strings near Christ's second coming. That struck me real hard. Europe was divided in two, mm. and that will be then by the second coming be very strong. Mm. Mm. That that kind of kind of is kind of uh, odd explanation. <coughs> sure. Me. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Uh, I I would I would have to do some <clears throat> further research That's on just that. That's the outcome. explanation here. For sure, the I, it, it lost me after after Rome being yeah. that fourth me. Yeah. <clears throat> but but you made a good point that I want to go back to about about uh, the Son of Man coming in the clouds and, and the second mm -hmm. uh, coming. Just just a couple of things here. Uh, in the in the notes that it provides, uh, Daniel saw one like the Son of Man, indicating that he is not a man in the strict sense, but rather the perfect representation of humanity. And of course, both Christian and Jewish expositors have identified this uh, individual as the Messiah uh, himself. So, so ju just to kind of tie all of this into worship. Uh, you'll you'll notice you'll notice often that uh, the first Sunday of Advent, which by the way this year is going to be December first, uh, often preachers will use this text. And let me just give you this reference here. Uh, it's Matthew twenty four and thirty about Jesus coming in the clouds, uh, and then Revelation uh, one and seven. Uh, and and it, it just, it, it, always, it always struck me, uh, and it still does, that a, a text would be used like that when we're thinking about the, the coming of, of the Christ child. But then again, we also need to, need to factor in, right, that although you and I are hopefully anticipating the Christ child coming back, right, into our hearts, into our lives, into our, our households, there's also this recognition of the coming back of the Son of Man, too. Okay? So, so there's, there, there's, there's two parts. There, there's kind of this dual, dual focus here. So just, just wanted to mention that because that, that struck me here about the coming of the, of the Son of Man, um, which, which we do need to... Uh, we do need to recognize uh, people of faith and, and as <coughs> Wesleyan Methodists here. Okay, great. Let, let's, uh, let's continue here. Let's do verse 15. And if someone would read, I, I'd say if, if someone's comfortable, just go ahead and finish for us uh, the rest of the chapter. So 15 to 28. 15 to 20, <clears throat> whoever fills the land. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the true meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth, but the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom <clears throat> and will possess it forever, yes, forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying, with its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell the horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, this horn was raging war against the saints and defeating them, until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. 
The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints and try to change the set times and the laws. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times and half a time. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of the kingdoms <clears throat> under the whole heaven will be handed over to the saints, the people of the Most High. <clears throat> his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled, troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale. But I kept the matter to myself. Mm, wow. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Already, let let me let me just uh, highlight for us that, that there's kind of a, a a turn here for Daniel. Only only that that he was grieved in the spirit. So let let's go let's go back to the very first part of what Kathy just read, verse fifteen, just for a minute. We we don't see this. Uh, up until this point in the scriptures, where where, where th there's this heaviness upon Daniel that was not there uh, in the in the scriptures preceding it. So it says, verse 15 again, I Daniel was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Wow, heavy, 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 heavy. Okay, let's jump over what what Kathy then ended with here. And again, it, it, it's almost like these two bookends here. Verse 28, it says, this is the end of the account. And as for me, uh, uh, as for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter. I, I've got, I've got just, just a my own translation. I kept the matter in my heart, okay? So, anyway, serious, serious stuff. So just just mark those two bookend scriptures, if you will. And, and this this will be a good a good segue just for a moment to look on the, the handout. And for for our viewing audience, we will we will make sure, Rachel, if you would, just uh, just to include this this handout if, if you would um don't don't want to don't want to read it word for word but just uh just to highlight a, a few things here uh so look look at the very top there right under that first uh full paragraph the four beasts and the little horn so if you'll if you'll take note of those kingdoms that are that are uh, mentioned there that have been mentioned before so that we, we've kind of got that reference point. And then this little horn that, that, that came up in the scriptures, let's, let's look at that. So out of the fourth beast emerges a small horn, eyes like the eyes of a man, uh, frightful. Uh, this horn represents a future persecuting power that will change the saints, excuse me, challenge the saints and attempt to change God's laws. So take take note of that, uh, if you would, uh, there. And, and then the other the, the other uh, section right below it about the thorn judgment. Watch watch what happens here to this small um, to this little horn, the, the small horn. This second to last sentence there it says the books of human deeds are opened and the little horn then is condemned so that is that is the fate uh, there uh, mention there of the son of man and the kingdom of god i want us to want us to see that uh, right below it the historical and prophetic significance just just to kind of put it in a in a world history perspective, just for a minute, we we see this mentioned throughout the book of Daniel. But just look at this. Uh, certainly, certainly an important part of world history, right? 
the rise and the fall of empires, but, but I want you to circle this, to the ultimate triumph there of God's kingdom. That, that's, that's the important part. Um, and, and then take, take note of these figures that I want us to uh, have a name to, okay? particularly the Antichrist. Okay. G give, me, give me just a moment. I, I, I want us to, to look at the relevance for, for today part, okay? So how, how is it, or, and, and what is it that we can take from this that we can certainly put into uh, life it's, itself and make sense of it? Let's look at this. Warning against oppression more and more. The church being oppressed, not the church uh, in Russia, but the universal church uh, worldwide, right? Uh, that, that's, that's one thought of, uh, of oppression that I had. This little horn represents the dangers of persecution, intolerance, and attempts to silence God's people. Wow, okay, I mean, so very relevant. Uh, today, okay, warning against oppression. Uh, uh, the, 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 even the American church being stung by that, it's not something that we're praying about and looking to in a far off land, but even, even right here. Okay, a uh, promise of God's kingdom. Let, let's, let's look at that one. The vision assures believers that God's kingdom will ultimately what? Prevail, okay? Let's underline that, please. Underline that, okay? We've seen that multiple times, okay? It will ultimately uh, prevail, what? Despite worldly trials and tribulations, and they, these worldly trials and tribulations, they are, they are in our face, and, and that is the the loud voice oftentimes, and it's hard to, to see, to hear beyond uh, that, that very loud noise. But I want us to know God's kingdom will ultimately prevail. Okay, a need for watchfulness, okay? Scripture is filled with that, okay? I, I think of the scriptures that talk about how you and I need to have that, that sober mind, that, that watchful eye. Be ready. Be prepared. Okay? So, so important. A need for watchfulness. Um, Dan, Daniel's vision calls us to be, circle this, vigilant, okay, and uh, uh, vigilant, excuse me, vigilant and prepared, okay? Vigilant and prepared for the Son of Man. Okay, that is coming. Okay, and we can use those scriptures in, in Matthew, Revelation, just as examples of that. And then we always need hope. Every one of us, we need hope. We need biblical hope. We need a hopeful outlook. Look at this. Hope for the future. Amidst the chaos and darkness of the world, the vision of Daniel 7 offers hope and encouragement. And underline this, reminding us that God is in control, okay? Oh, only man thinks he is in control, right? But God is in control and will ultimately establish his perfect kingdoms. Kings only think they are in control. Empires, kingdoms only think so, right? But they rise and they fall. But what is this? Perfect God who is in control, uh, establishing then his perfect kingdom. So, um, anyway, a good uh, good thought there. Thoughts on on seven as we as we can move uh, move on. To... Why do you think he left it out of the book? Because eight and seven are almost. Oh, they're to combined in the book. In in, in this book. Um, so, so the the one thing, and, and maybe it was Patty that I, said this. I read that, that he's there in the back when you get to the end, it's it out of order, and so that's right. why he didn't do this. And it, 
it. They say they'll come back to it, but I didn't read it yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I that's what I read too. Um, it it did it did strike me as 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 odd, and I jokingly said I'll I'll reach out to the pastor and ask him. But, I didn't. So, <laughs> but, 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 but that's my thought. There yes, ma'am. I feel there's a lot for revelation in this. Absolutely. It's, it's, Absolutely. it's like a great revelation again. I see this in 6, is it, and in 13. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the end, there's a 20, that's about it's almost the end where they're starting the, no, what's the word? Where they're starting the end. I think it's in 7 or 6. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Multiple, <coughs> multiple parallels there. Um, Okay. Well, well, let's uh, let's do this. Let's let's go to eight, please, and we will uh, read through this. A vision of the of the ram and. Brad, yes, ma'am. I just have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was reading the other day on my news feed, and there was a man who posted that he went into a Subway <coughs> sandwich shop, mm -hmm. and he was wearing a. T shirt that had a Christian phrase on it and he was refused service, oh which goes God. right back to the persecution of, wow. of Christians. Wow, there you go. But you know, can't we also take that as our steadfast, strong commitment? Right, right. And he, he you know, he stood mm -hmm. up for himself, but he still mm -hmm. was refused service. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, end result was the worker who refused him was ultimately fired mm -hmm. but the fact remains that that worker because of his belief because of his belief because of the phrase he had on his shirt mm -hmm. uh, wow. was refused wow yeah. wow unsettling i was been torn here out to states one time and i'm in one shop out of store it he owned a store and you realize on my accent that you are from Germany. And I said, yes. And, and, and it was a store that served cards and so little souvenirs. And it was in Shreveport on Fairfield, was it? Many, many, many years ago. But, and he said, I will not serve you. And he literally, he said, I do not believe Germans, yet are killers. Mm. I am as you, and you killed my parents, and he literally pushed me out, and Johnny was with me, he, he couldn't even sing so fast, and, and he said, wait a minute, and he said, you go out too, mm. and he refused literally to serve me, mm. and he, he, he just like Johnny, and Johnny had nothing to do with this, he's not, he's a blood fresh American, you know, I mean, he left. But I have nothing to do with the UK. I mean, I was born there. I can't help that my four, <coughs> but that's what happened before me, you know. I mean, troubling, <coughs> troubling, troubling. Mm, wow. My, my. Um, okay, well, well let's, uh, let, let's do this. Let's, let's look at another, another vision here. You okay, Martha? You want some water? You good? Okay, all right. Um, Let's uh, let's do this. Let's <coughs> look at let's see chapter eight. Let's read through eight verses one through. I've got a, I've got a break here right after right after seven. Um, so whoever whoever wants to read that. Chapter 8, verses 1 through 7. How about and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll unpack it from there. Wait, wait. Are we, we're chapter 8? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> In the third year of reign of King Balthazar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, <coughs> after the one that appeared to me at first. <coughs> In the vision I was looking and saw myself in Susa, the capital, in the province of Elam, and I was by the river Ulay. I looked up and saw a ram standing beside the river, and it had two horns. Both horns were long, but one was longer than the other, and the longer one came up second. 
I saw the ram charging westward and northward and southward. All beasts were powerless to withstand it, and no one could rescue it from its power. I did as it did as it pleased and became strong. As I was watching, a male goat appeared from the west, coming across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground. The goat had a horn between its eyes. It came toward the ram with the two horns that I had seen standing beside the river, and it ran at it with savage force. I saw it approaching the ram. It was enraged against it and struck the ram, breaking its two horns. The ram did not have power to withstand it. It threw the ram down to the ground and trampled upon it. And there was no one who could rescue the ram from its power. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let let's take a look at the look at the book since he since he doesn't doesn't go entirely through this whole chapter, but kind of breaks it into into different uh, sections here, um, one through eight, and then fifteen through uh, twenty two. So, if you would. Let us look, um, let's go to page 206, 206, so in the chapter of the Conqueror, okay. Uh, one, one thing to go back to that, that Patty is, has mentioned already and that I, that I starred and underlined here, 206, about halfway down uh, this page, he, he makes mention here, this is a good place to be reminded that the book of Daniel was not arranged chronologically. Belshazzar died in the Persian evasion of Babylon, recorded at the end of Daniel 5. And Daniel 6 follows chronologically with events that happened under the Persian ruler Darius. Then Daniel 7 and 8 go back almost 20 years and tell us of two visions that occurred before Belshazzar's downfall. This chapter explores the second vision, the one in Daniel 8, because the events that uh, because the events that that vision describes occurred before the events of the vision in Daniel 7. We have already addressed some of the prophecies of Daniel 7, and others will come up in a later chapter. Okay, just a, just a couple of other things here that, that I want us to take note of here. Page 207 at the top here, we, we can begin, if, uh, if, if you'd like, to underline here that, that first sentence. The vision in Daniel 8 zooms in and focuses on only two kingdoms, or on, on, excuse me, on only two of those kingdoms, that being Medo-Persia and Greece. These kingdoms are represented in the Colossus by the chest and arms of the silver and the belly and thighs of bronze going back to Daniel 2. Okay, so a little bit more about these two kingdoms, a paragraph right under it. These two kingdoms are singled out in Daniel 8 because they have special relevance for the Jewish people. Medio Persia is significant because the Persian king allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild its walls and temple. Greece is relevant because during the time of history, when that nation dominated, Jerusalem and the temple were besieged again after uh, Alexander, uh, after Alexander uh, the Great. Okay. Alrighty, uh, going over to page 208 here, let, let's, uh, let's now, let's see, I don't want to get too far ahead of us here. We read through verse 7. Okay, let, let, let's do this. Let's pause on the book for a moment and go through, let's see. Let's read verses 8 through 14. Yes, ma'am. Sure. 
Remember what he said on page 208 about the fact that we've already addressed some of the prophecies of Daniel 7 as his explanation for why he's left it out? I mean, on page 208, in the part that you read, it says, uh, we have already addressed some of the prophecies of Daniel, Daniel 7. I'm, I'm saying, do you think maybe, I, I mean, I just find it curious that he left out a whole chapter. Sure, think, no, no, I... I agree. He said we've done that already. We don't need to go over. Yeah, that. yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's his. Maybe that's his uh, subtle way. I, I, I mean, I, I know it wasn't. It wasn't forgotten. So, so I, I think he, he, in kind of a, a, a roundabout, subtle, subtle ways, mentioning. I, I, I think that's a, that's a good, uh, a good thought. Anybody else on, on, on that? Since he doesn't. Just to outright say it. Um, I just find it curious because yeah, you know, I tend to think he forgot. Or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When we critique his book, we need to let him know that he needs to say up front mm -hmm. that we're not going to cover this because yeah. it's yeah. already been covered. Instead of letting us wander around trying to figure it out. All right, educators. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, we're taking we're taking the word in your book serious here. Give us uh, give us a disclaimer. Uh, okay. All right. Very good. Okay, I, I tell you what, let's uh, let's read uh, whoever would like to read verse eight through fourteen if you if you would please. Therefore the heat go waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host, and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an honest host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgressions, and cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Okay, very good. Uh, and Jack, if you will take us 13 and 14 as well. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint, which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice, and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, until unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay, all righty. Uh, I, I, I think this is a, this is a good, good time to just offer some, some other notes here that I thought were, were very, very thoughtful and, uh, and, and, and that, that add to this, this particular uh, section here. So, so if you just want to want to jot some notes along with this, I think this is a, a good time to to offer them uh, here. So, uh, in, in this in this particular section here, uh, Daniel Daniel is giving a very specific vision and interpretation, <clears throat> but but as we will find out. Uh, he still couldn't understand it, okay? Uh, he gives this interpretation, and it still uh, is quite quite muddled here to where uh, it, it's not a, not a clear-cut uh, understanding. But just a couple of things that I wanted to add to the discussion here, okay? Daniel sees a vision of judgment for sin. He sees an angry ram and a violent goat. And an absurdly with absurdly large horns, he sees the result of sin running rampant in a civilization. 
And he asks, just as you and I might ask, how long? How long? That's Daniel 8 and 13. How long will this last? And the Holy One answers with a, a finite number. In this case, it is uh, 2,300 days, verse 14. But notice the number is real. It's a countable number. The big picture is that sin is sometimes allowed to flourish, but never forever. The whole, the whole ordeal appalls and even overwhelms Daniel, understandably. But here's the part we should really notice in particular. He got up and went about the king's business. If you would, put that down, okay? This vision, okay, it appalls and overwhelms him. But what I want us to take note of is verse 27. He got up and he went about the king's business. The scary news did not make Daniel give up, okay? And neither should you and I. Mm -hmm. The confusing and difficult revelations did not prevent him from holding on to what he did know, what he did understand. He took a minute, and then he went back to work. He got on his feet, and he did the good work that the Lord had called him to. He engaged in a culture and continued doing his faithful work, kind of like what Sandy had mentioned earlier, that giving us conviction even, even more, even more so. Okay? Uh, even when we feel afraid, even when we look to the future and dread wells up in our hearts, we know the most essential truth. If you would, write this down. God is on the throne. God is on the throne. Okay? Or, or I, another way that uh, uh, I, I think about it is God reigns. Jesus reigns. God is on the throne. Okay. This is his creation, and we, the church, are his bride. The angel tells Daniel, Son of man, understand that the vision refers to the time of the end. That's Daniel 8 and 17. That the end will come. The suffering in the world is limited and finite. But it will come. But we never need to fear the end. Remember how Christ spoke to His disciples of the end time, saying, Be courageous. I have conquered the world. That's John 16 and 33. So though we may, like Daniel, be overcome and lay sick for days, that's verse 27, when we look at the state of the world and wonder how can it all possibly come to good, we are called to remember that God is busy at work, that He reigns, that He sits on His throne regardless. Therefore, we can rise like Daniel and go about the business that God has set before us. We can be of good courage, knowing that the end of the story is not the triumph of wickedness, but the victory of Jesus Christ. And I'll say that again, because that's, that's worth worth writing down. We can be of good courage knowing that the end of the story is not the triumph of wickedness, but the victory of Jesus Christ. Truly, we are more than conquerors, Scripture says. Conquerors in Jesus Christ who rules and reigns forever. So take heart and go about your kingdom work. That'll preach right there. That will preach. Okay, um, let's uh, let's do this. He 
He has it through 22. Okay. So let's uh, let's do this. Jack ended on verse 14. If someone will read verse 15 through 22, and that'll that'll be <clears throat> good. Uh, it's While I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, <clears throat> there before me stood one who looked like a man. And I heard a man's voice from the Uriah calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. As he came near the place where I was standing, I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. Then he touched me and raised me to my feet. He said, I am going to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath, because the vision concerns the appointed time of the end. The two-horned ram that you saw represents the kings of Media and Persia. The shaggy goat is the king of Greece. And the large horn between his eyes is the first king. The four horns that replace the one that was broken off represents four kingdoms that will emerge from the, his nation but will not have the same power. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay, let's look at now... Page 208, okay, all right, uh, going back uh, a, a little bit uh, before Don's reading there, Daniel 8, 15, and 16, the perceiver of the vision. It happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning, that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of uh, uh, you, you, la, you lolly, uh, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. Let's look right under it here. Unlike Daniel's previous vision, this one, along with the appearance of the angel Gabriel, overwhelmed him. Just, just underline. He fainted and then was sick for days. Although Daniel had understood the previous visions, he needed help interpreting this one. While he was seeking the meaning, that is, trying to understand what he'd seen, the angel Gabriel appeared to him to explain the symbolic imagery. Uh, Gabriel means... Uh, mighty man of God. He is often a public relations angel, an announcer of good news. And of course, what we have there in Luke is the uh, news from Gabriel about about the birth of about the birth of Christ. So, so I I, I find it I find it uh, just the the hand of God here that although although Daniel was was shook up, although he 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 trembled. Right, uh, God God was present. God made a way for him. He was able to then go about the king's business. Yes, this this for the first time in the scriptures said that uh, his countenance fell. Uh, some scriptures, I believe, say he even turned white. He got sick. Right, but 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 look what happened. God opened up that door. And even sent that that messenger to make make sense of it of it all, and and I think there is a there is a good hopeful word there for for you and I. Did I see a hand? Christ yes, ma'am. And this is a little all about Jesus, says, Son of God, and that's where it occurred to me. It's just a, a comment. Um, all tool that we so far studied is always. A male, and it makes me thinking. If I come in heaven, I don't think so because I'm not a male. Mm. <laughs> it's all what 
in the regulations was all male names. Mm -hmm. Male. Mm -hmm. it, well, that's so the, the culture. The culture but culture it is all men. It's only men. God accept only the men and not the women. <coughs> no. He that was that also fun. the culture of the writers. Mm -hmm. That if you look at early literature, mm -hmm. there's a, it's always male dominant. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then we got there. We took and over. Then we we did. <laughs> we succeeded. Yeah, that's right. That's well, right. Well, Jesus, Jesus said it's okay. Be a girl. He did. There you go. And, and he he had many many female followers. Yes, he did. He did. He did. Mary he Magdalene was one of the one of the followers that was that's the right. apostle to the apostle. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and even even his own. His own mother, Mary, as well. Amen. So, yes, yes. And I, I'm thinking about uh, Phoebe, and I'm thinking about uh, also Tabitha, and so many. So, yes, yes. There, there, there is certainly a, a place, a place in heaven for for all of us. We are, we are God's children. So, uh, uh, good, good. Well, what, well said. Everybody. Um, let me let me just mention a, a couple of other things here. I've been been given the sign that uh, we are we are nearing uh, uh, the end of our time. But look on page two ten, if you would. Um, uh, I uh, I had a, a friend of mine that had uh, had a goat farm and uh, would would help shearing goats once upon a time. Uh, and, and what an interesting animal uh, that that is uh, the the goat. So, ju just a couple of couple of things just struck me here. Um, look at uh, middle of the page on two two ten here. Uh, the goat, and, and you know, I'm thinking about these uh, symbolic animals uh, and their their meaning and and uh, symbols for for countries. And of course, where do we read that the bear was? Um, yeah, that was at the beginning. Um, of course, the bear very much is a symbol for Russia today, but it was something different back then. Anyway, anyway, uh, neither here nor there. Page 210, the goat is the symbol of Greece, and I'll tell you why I found this interesting. The first colony of Greece was directed by an oracle uh, to get a goat for a guide and build a city. And in gratitude to that goat for leading them aright, they built the city and they called it... Um, Aegea. Aegea, thank you, thank you. Aegea, the goat city. And of course, you are familiar with the fact that the waters around Greece are to this day called the Aegean Sea, the Goat Sea. The goat has always been the national symbolic figure of Greece. Figures of a goat are found on many of the ancient Macedonian monuments. Um, so just just uh, just take take note of uh, take note of that. Um, there. Okay, I, I tell you what, let's, uh, let, let's go ahead and stop there, if you would. You can mark page 210, and what we will do for next time, let's do this. For next time, what we will do is um, go through the rest of chapter 8 uh, in the book, and read through as much of chapter 9 uh, as you can, which chapter 9 in the book covers the um, uh, verses 9 through 14 and the rest of the book of, uh, of Daniel chapter 8. So we can, we can kind of finish chapter 8 with, um, with the madman. And see how far far we get we get there. So uh, very good. Okay, fantastic. Um, let me uh, let me make one plug, please, for uh, this Saturday. It is um, 
this Saturday because I know Paula would want us to, uh, want us to take note of it. Uh, it is uh, the bazaar uh, that's coming up Saturday. So uh, if you are if you are able to come out and check out these vendors, um, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. Patty, do you want me to say anything else? Any specifics? I'm leaving out the time. Uh, they got food vendors. Food vendors. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. It's just going to be an absolute, uh, absolute blast. Starts at nine o'clock in the morning. Goes to three. Goes to three. So, ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, come out for that.